You're listening to the Vocabit Podcast, where I help students improve their vocabulary for the SAT, ACT, and life itself using my unique and research-backed story-based method. On this podcast, I'm sharing the best tips and tricks for a more enriched vocabulary and pain-free test day. Hello, and welcome to episode 64 of the Vocabit Podcast. I'm Erica Abbott, a former English and history teacher, the author of the young adult novel Ahead of Her Time, and the founder of the eponymously named vocabulary company Vocabit. Today's word is blatherskite, and oh my gosh, did it lead me down the coolest rabbit hole. I found it about a month ago in a gorgeous book called The Dictionary of Difficult Words. I'll link to it in the show notes. But I saw this word, blatherskite, which means a person who talks at great length without making much sense, basically a person who blathers. And I was like, that's amazing. Who is clever enough to call someone a blatherskite? I definitely have a weakness for clever insults. I did a whole podcast on it. So naturally, I had to know the history of this word. So I turned to the dictionary. It tells me that blatherskite comes from blather, which we already figured out, plus skite, a Scots derogatory term, and I'm quoting now, adopted into American colloquial speech during the War of Independence from the Scottish song Maggie Lauder, which was popular with American troops, end quote. So I read that and I'm like, wait, hold on. There is so much to unpack here. We've got a pseudo-Scottish insult that became popular with American troops during the war we fought against the British, made popular by a song about a girl, Maggie Lauder. So naturally, the next step is, okay, well, I have to find this song. We're all used to the dramatic soundtracks of period pieces, but what was the actual jam during those times? What was George Washington humming in the bath? And why this song? Why Scottish song? Of all the things that could have been popular with American soldiers during the Revolutionary War, why this? I can only guess it's partially because the Scottish had just fought a war of their own against the English, culminating in the horrific Battle of Culloden when Scotland was just utterly destroyed. So for American soldiers to be singing Scottish songs, it was kind of another way for us to thumb our nose at the English. Even though the English won that war against the Scottish, I kind of think of it like, you know, the Romans defeated Cleopatra, but if you strolled into Augustus's court whistling Cleopatra's favorite song, I still think that would really annoy him. So I spent an entire night on this song because I actually had a really hard time figuring out what it meant. A Scottish accent is one thing, 18th century Scottish is another. I honestly couldn't even figure out just the written lyrics. So I thought, I wonder if anyone has recorded a new version of this. Maybe I'll understand it better if I can add another sense to this. And luckily, this song, Maggie Lauder, has survived as a folk song. There's a band called The Corys that did a popular rendition of it, and I'm going to play the first stanza. This is where the word blatherskite comes in, and I'll translate in a second if your Scots is as poor as mine. right? (laughs) Luckily, after hours of research and listening to this song on repeat while squinting my eyes really hard, I now kind of know what they're saying, and it's actually a really clever little song. In addition to the other reason I mentioned behind its popularity, the fact that it's kind of an insult to the British, it has a really catchy tune once you know what they're saying, and it has contemporaneously appropriate amounts of inappropriateness laced into the lyrics. Basically, there are some double entendres in it that you really wouldn't think twice about today, but it would have been kind of racy for the 1700s. So it's catchy, it's kind of inappropriate, and it's a way to say screw you to the British. What's not to love? So let's set the scene here and decipher that first stanza. First line, written and sounds like, way wouldn't be in love with Bonnie Maggie Lauder. Translates to who wouldn't be in love with Bonnie pretty Maggie Lauder. The way confused me a lot, that first word. It's written W-H-A, but apparently it means who. So who wouldn't be in love with Bonnie Maggie Lauder? Next line, a piper met her gone to Fife. He asked her what they called her. Basically a bagpiper, a musician, either on his way to Fife or coming back from Fife. The line is gone to Fife. Asked her her name. Asked her what they called her. Asked her her name. So who wouldn't be in love with Bonnie Maggie Lauder? A piper met her gone to Fife, asked her what they called her. her. 
This is where it gets good. Right scornfully, she answered him, begone ya Holland Shager, spelled like Hallen Shaker, H-A-L-L-A-N Shaker, S-H-A-K-E-R. Apparently it means vagabond. So right scornfully, she answered him, get out of here, ya bum, ya Holland Shager. Jog on ya gates, ya blather skate. That's our big word, which becomes blatherskite in American English. So get out of here, you bum. Keep going, big talker. My name is Maggie Lauder. I swear, having listened to this song now a thousand times, I actually find it super catchy. I like want to start singing and clapping along. But the rest of the song goes on. Basically, this guy says, come sit down by me, my bonnie bird. My name is Rob the Ranter. The lassies go daft when I blow up my chanter. Basically, girls go nuts when I play the bagpipe. And she goes, ah, Rob the Ranter, I've heard of you. I'll shake my foot with right goodwill if you blow up your chanter. So basically, I'll dance if you play. He's like, heck yes, there's all this back and forth of them dancing. His face is all red by the end. And she says, next time you're in town, just ask for Maggie Lauder. If you want to read into it, which undoubtedly these soldiers did, dancing can obviously be a euphemism for something else. And there's even more to it if you really think about like bagpipes. But I'll let you decide how many of these 18th century metaphors you want to decipher. But like I always say, there's a whole world inside each of these words, a kind of microcosm, a sneak peek into history that seems to get lost in just the straight factual accounts. For me, at least, I've never really been interested in American history, but I find this time period so much more relatable now, just with the story of this one word. It's no longer just wooden-toothed George Washington and his apocryphal cherry tree. I mean, I don't mind the I cannot tell a lie story, but it's not particularly fun. This, however, Blatherskite, humanizes it for me. I can totally imagine a bunch of soldiers singing and dancing and thinking about Maggie Lauder. And I love that we added a whole new word to the English language from this song, Blatherskite. It kind of sounds more like Blatherskate when you listen to the song, Jog on your gate, yeah, Blatherskate, but we write it skite, S-K-I-T-E. Great word, blatherskite. Someone who talks without saying much of substance. A blatherer, a blatherskite. All right, I'll be back on Thursday with another great episode. We're going to talk about why they call it football in the rest of the world, but why we call it soccer. I will see you guys then. If you are not yet a Vocabit member, be sure to head over to vocabit.com. That's V-O-C and then Abbott like my last name, A-B-B-E-T-T. With historical episodes like this, you get a whole video that goes with the episode that makes everything so much more fun and easy to conceptualize. It really adds a lot to the episode. I'll see you guys there.